The topic for today's lesson comes from simplifying expressions and equations, more practice with two-step equations. Our essential question today is, what are the steps to master when solving two-step equations to prepare for more complex equations? Please take a moment, pausing the video if you need to, to copy the topic and essential question into your header, along with today's date, set up your question column and your note column, and resume the video when you're ready to begin. So we've been working with two-step equations for a little bit in class, and so you are familiar with hearing some of these steps. I do want to remind you that these are guiding steps, as on occasion some problems will call for a slightly different order. But our main goal is to first eliminate the constant term. Again, that's the one without the variable. Second, to isolate the variable by getting rid of the coefficient. And third, to check the solution by substitution. So with keeping these steps in mind, there are definitely some reminders that I want to make sure that we are writing down in our notes and keeping in mind anytime we're working with two-step equations. The first is that in these first two steps where you're eliminating the constant term and then isolating the variable by undoing the coefficient, you want to make sure that you're undoing with the opposite operation. So whatever operation is being stated in the equation or expression, you are doing the opposite. In that equation, you want to make sure that you're being aware of grouping symbols. This could be parentheses or brackets, as well as fraction bars where you have more than one thing happening in the numerator or the denominator. And so when you see those grouping symbols, it's just kind of a red flag to proceed with caution. Then also make sure that you're paying attention to your rules with negatives. Pay attention to the sign when calculating with negative numbers. Remember your rules for adding and subtracting with positive and negative numbers, as well as the rules for multiplying and dividing. They are different and they can sometimes get a little bit confused and lead to careless mistakes when solving equations. Lastly, be aware of the sneakiest numbers in math that are 1 and negative 1, in particular negative 1 especially when it is a coefficient in front of the variable, you will just see a subtraction sign and not the negative one, and that can sometimes lead us to forget a step and have a wrong answer. So, with those steps and reminders in our notes and in our minds, let's go ahead and dive into our practice problems. Okay. So for our first practice problem today, we're looking at a pretty straightforward equation. Negative 5x plus 13 is equal to negative 17. So our goal is to figure out what x is and to be able to prove our answer by showing all of our steps, even if we think we can do it with mental math. So paying attention to our steps, we first want to identify the expression with the variable. So here's on the left side, negative 5x plus 13. And step one tells us to eliminate the constant term. So what's that going to look like? If you said subtract 13, I agree with you because that is the opposite of adding 13, which is our constant term here. I've also included a bar down from a line from the equal sign dividing the left expression from the right, which helps us remember that whatever we do to one side, we also have to do to the other to keep it balanced. So after subtracting 13, we are left with just negative 5x on the left-hand side because we've eliminated that constant. And on the right-hand side, where we have taken the negative 17 and subtracted 13, we're now at negative 30. So we're ready for step two to isolate the variable, meaning we want to get that by itself or undo or eliminate the coefficient. So x is being multiplied by negative 5. That's what it means when a number is written next to the variable. So how do we undo multiplication? That's right, division. Let's go ahead and do that. So we are dividing and because x is being multiplied by negative 5. When we divide negative 5 by negative 5, that cancel out to be just a positive 1. And so we'll have isolated that x variable. 
on the right hand side now we just have to do this multiplication negative 30 divided by negative 5 and if we divide that our signs are the same what is our answer going to be if you said x is equal to positive 6 I agree our signs are the same so we get a positive result so we've done the first two steps we've gotten to a solution the last thing is to plug that in to our original equation and prove that when we put 6 in for x it makes a true statement on both sides So this is what it looks like to substitute the 6 in place of the x into the original equation. I like to continue to draw that line down from the equal sign to make sure that I know that I'm proving that the left side simplifies down to be the same as the right. So we do our order of operations, multiplication before addition, negative 5 times, ne po times a positive 6 is a negative 30. We're adding 13 to that negative 30 plus 13 is in fact negative 17 so we do get the same thing on both sides making that a true statement so we can confidently say that x equals 6 is our solution let's try the second one For problem number two, we're going to use the equation 5 is equal to r divided by 10 plus 4. So go ahead and get that problem written down. Feel free to pause it and go as far as you can solving for the value of r and then check back with me. So we're trying, here's our term with the variable r in it. So we want to undo this constant term. The opposite of adding 4 is subtracting 4, so we are subtracting 4 from both sides, and that eliminates our constant here. And 5 minus 4, we have to simplify that, and then we'll be left with just on the right hand side r divided by 10. So if you did 5 minus 4 and got 1, is equal to r equals 10 on the right. I agree. So now we need to just get that variable by itself, isolate the variable, undo what's happening to it. What do you think is the next step? That's right, multiply by 10 because r is being divided by 10, so the opposite is to multiply both sides by 10. And what are we going to get as a final result? You said r is equal to 10. That's what I got. Last step is to plug it in and check that it makes both sides true. Go ahead and pause the video here, do that, and then let's check back to compare. Okay, so if you plugged in 10 for r in the numerator, then we want to simplify this side with the variable. The left side is already simplified down to 5, so we just bring that all the way down. But we want to simplify this right hand side. 10 divided by 10 is 1, then we're adding 4 to that, which gets us 5. So the left expression is equal to the right expression, meaning our answer of r is equal to 10 is correct. Let's take a look at our third practice problem. Okay, so for example number 3, we have the quantity m minus 13 all divided by 2 is equal to a negative 8. Here's an example of that grouping symbol that just says, hey, things might be slightly different, so pay attention to the order of your steps. And so we can assume that when you have a variable written in a fraction bar and it has and in this case it's in the numerator m and it has another operation we can put parentheses around that and say I'm gonna save that for last because that is the part with the variable and so I need to undo what's happening here so since the quantity m minus 13 is being divided by 2 what are we gonna do to undo that Well, answer we're looking for there is multiply by 2. That would be the opposite. We do that to both sides. So by multiplying by 2, we're going to cancel out this 2 in the denominator. And 
and that leaves us with the expression on the left, m minus 13. And since a negative times a positive is a negative, on the right, negative 8 times 2 is a negative 16. So now we just have to get this m by itself, and so how are we going to do that? The opposite of subtracting 13 is adding 13, so we'll go ahead and do that to both sides. This cancels out a constant here, leaving m by itself, which has no coefficient. So that'll just bring our m down, and what are we going to get on the right-hand side if we take negative 16 plus 13? Well, we should get m is equal to negative 3. But once again, be sure to substitute that in to check. Well, we can plug that in, follow our order of operations, and see that that left side expression, when negative 3 replaces m, we do get negative 8 on both sides. So our answer was correct. So now I'm going to give you three more problems for you to solve on your own at your own pace, and then I will reveal the answers at the end. So let's go ahead and take a look at what those problems are. Okay, so very much following in the same steps as what we did for the first three problems, I would like you to copy these problems in to your notes, solve them at your own pace, pausing the video here, and then when you're ready, uh, continue with the video to reveal the answers and check your work. Alright, good luck and I can't wait to check back in with you in a few moments. Okay, let's see how you did. In problem number four, we were answering, looking for the answer n is equal to 8. Again, I left a room here. You should know that you are correct by plugging that number in solving it and checking for yourself. Same with number five, but the answer we're looking for is r is equal to a positive six. If you got a negative six, I'm going to guess you got tripped up with this being a negative one coefficient, that sneaky negative one, so you had to divide both sides by negative one to get that positive six. In our third and final practice problem for you, you should have found that x is equal to a negative 21. If any of those answers you did not get correct, please take a moment to check over my work here, compare it with yours, jot down any questions you may have, and I can't wait to discuss more problems like this with you in class.